Welcome back to my health diary. Well, we are starting off exactly where we left off in March. And I still haven't had my tooth extracted, but I think it's going to be rather soon. And it will happen during the course of this episode. So let's get started. During my visits to the hygienist, one of the things that she said that I could try to do to help overcome my gag reflex was to use children's flavoured toothpaste. I haven't been able to find it anywhere. I looked on Amazon, Superdrug, Boots, other chemists and supermarkets and I couldn't find it anywhere. Then by pure chance, the other day I was at a BP filling station and I needed some points on my BP and more, whatever it's called, card, because I transferred them into Alphagos. That's a whole other episode. But anyway, I needed to spend seven pounds and I looked around, what can I get, what can I get? And then all of a sudden I found this. This is Aquafresh Splash Strawberry Flavor Toothpaste. It says three to eight years. Expert protection and great taste for kids. But it's actually, expert protection and great taste for big kids as well because my hygienist said that it's actually just as good as using regular toothpaste and the idea to use a flavored toothpaste is because what i'm trying to do to overcome this gag reflex is to break the connection with how i normally brush my teeth so most people would use a mint flavoured toothpaste. I guess you can get charcoal ones and everything as well, and the, the specialist ones. But would you think of using strawberry? Well, perhaps not, but I'm going to do it today. And also, I have been changing my head recently. <laughs> yes, I'm using a very small bristle here on my electric toothbrush. Now, this is actually meant for interdentals, that's uh, going in between teeth. But I've discovered it's actually easier to use this to brush my teeth normally than it is to use a regular head. Now, this isn't actually a regular head. This is a children's size head, but I find that it too is actually still too big and my gag reflex comes out. So we are going to open the box and we'll give this splash strawberry toothpaste a little sniff, first of all. So it is 50 mil, it's quite small. I bought two of them actually, there were three in the store. Maybe I should have bought all of them. Mm -hmm. I might never see it again. But who knows, I might not like it, that's the thing as well. Okay, ooh, look at that. Mm. Gosh, it really does smell like strawberries. Right, uh, now I do run the tap when I, when I brush. Should I not, Paul? Well, I need a little bit of water. I don't know what it is, it's just a thing. I like to go like this. Okay, so we'll put on a small amount. That's probably still too much. And a little bit more water. And I don't want to get my nice white t-shirt. I don't normally wear white, but I don't know why I'm doing this now. I need a bib, so I've got a, I've got a towel here. So let's see how this works. And I need to work around the implant. Mmm. No. Let's get up in here. This is the implant you see here. This one. Mmm. Do you know what it tastes like? Strawberry. It tastes like, well, you'd call it star Starburst now. Does it taste like Jello? Mmm, yeah. Back in the day, Starburst over here was called Little Fruits. Look at this, I'm actually brushing and not gagging. Oh. I'm going in around the tooth that's being extracted. So that's right at the back. And down here as well. And oh yeah, at the right of her. 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 This is extraordinary. I'm not gagging. You would have thrown up mm -hmm. by now. Wow. I 
I could keep on going. Alright. Wow, that's unbelievable. Now then there's no water now. I don't think you need to rinse. Oh I do need to rinse a little bit. No, you should mm. just leave it. Mmm. Wow. I can't believe it. It's worked. So Louise, my hygienist, was right. Look at this. By using strawberry flavour toothpaste, I've actually managed to brush my teeth without gagging. Wow. This is a whole new concept. It's the 14th of March and my tooth has been feeling a bit sore, uncomfortable, and I was a bit worried. Um, so I contacted the dentist to see if I could get some antibiotics, which might clear this up before I get it extracted. So luckily I was able to do that and I went over today. So I am on a course of antibiotics for the next seven days. So let's see if this does help me in the meantime. It's mid April and it's about a month since I had the antibiotics. Everything was fine until a few days ago when the pain started up again and it's become quite bad over the weekend. I've been on painkillers. Um, so there is a flare up. I'm now back at my dentist's just about to head in. They can't take the tooth out today. I'm gonna to have to wait until the date of the appointment. They also don't really want to take it out if there's a flare up. So I'm being given another set of antibiotics and hopefully this will tide me over until the extraction, which is just in the second week of May. So it's about three and a half weeks time um, until that date. I really hope that these work. Thing is, the last set of antibiotics, they kicked in after about three to four days and everything was fine for three and a half weeks. Um, so even if it only lasts another three and a half weeks, then that will take me up to the time when I do get the tooth out. <sighs> but I really need to get rid of it now. I think all this pain, it's, it's like, it's not constant. It's just when I put any pressure on, and obviously if you bite or even press the upper um, the tooth down, that is when I feel the twinge. Um, but because there's no nerve, at least it's not constant. But it has been annoying and it's been giving me a headache as well. So I'm almost at the dentist's surgery and hopefully the next bit you see will be the day when I'm getting the tooth out. The day has finally come when I get my tooth taken out. It's a molar at the back, bottom left. It's been ongoing for a few months that I've been having the, the pain and the bacteria affecting it. I've been on two lots of antibiotics and the last lot that I took was about three weeks ago. So today is Thursday, May the 9th. And just this morning, there's been a little bit of a tingling pain has started to come back. So I think it's the tooth basically saying, I'm going to annoy you one last time. Um, I have been really sort of anxious about this. I have about an hour to go. I'm going to eat something now. We're in Kew Gardens where my dentist is based. I know that everything will be fine, but it's just the the thought of it. I've had teeth taken out before. It's that sort of noise because obviously your teeth are very close to your ears, so you can hear all the grinding and stuff as the tooth comes out. But I'm hoping that it will come out pretty easily. Oh, and then there's the recovery period. I don't know how long that's going to take. Um, a few days probably, and then I'll have to get used to to eating again, but I haven't really been putting any pressure on that tooth anyway. So I'm hoping that once it heals and everything, eating isn't going to be that much of a problem. But I will keep you informed along the way. And the next time you see me, well, Paul will probably be holding the camera and the tooth will have come out. I survived. Um, I had quite a lot of anaesthetic, which was great. And that's why I'm talking like this at the minute. I actually quite like this. It sounds as though I'm sort of 
drunk. <laughs> um, it, I'm smiling because of the two sides. It's a relief, it's gone. Yay. And I didn't want it, and I didn't take it. The Tooth Fairy wouldn't want it either. But the great news is that it came out in one go. Um, the only thing is, is that I did need stitches. So I've been given a seven day course of things I need to do, including antibiotics, mouthwash, painkillers, and um, little suction pads in case it starts to bleed. I can't brush my teeth today, no brushing at all. Um, luckily I've got like a Listerine spray, which I might sort of do just to freshen up my breath, but no mouthwash or anything. They've also given me a, a mouthwash to hold in my mouth uh, three times a day for a minute each time for the next few days. Um, but no swirling around because of the stitches. They don't obviously don't want the stitches to come out. But it's such a relief to get this out. I haven't looked in my mouth yet. Once the anaesthetic wears off, um, that's when I'll be able to sort of assess how painful it's going to be. I've already taken a painkiller and also uh, once the anaesthetic wears off, I'll be able to have a sort of a feel around um, to see how it feels and how the top level um, meets the bottom. At the minute, I can't feel anything because my tongue is uh, still completely numb, especially at the back. But we'll give a little update um, when things have settled down again. I want to thank Jason Burns, my dentist, who I've been coming to for over 20 years, and everyone at the White House Dental Surgery I go in Kew Gardens. Yes, Paul goes there too. They put me at complete ease every time, and I don't know what I'd do without them. It's the day after my extraction. Not yet 24 hours has passed, and I'm actually feeling a lot better than I thought I would. But I woke up this morning with absolutely terrible pain and I was able to then take a painkiller and it eased within about half an hour and it's now four or five hours later and I'm still okay. It does feel quite tender down here when I put my tongue round. I don't think there's been any bleeding. I can sort of taste a sort of a blood taste but there's no actual like um, leakage or anything. Nothing seeping out. So that's good. Um, I've been eating soft food and I will be for the next four to five days. Um, I had some omelette last night. I had a, a pancake, some Madeira cake, um, which was softened with milk. And I had a rice pudding. Um, but I am feeling a little bit hungry, so I'm going to make some porridge and then let it cool down. I'll be starting work in about half an hour as well, but I'm working from home today and will be for the first couple of days next week because my food choices are rather limited and I don't really feel like um, having to travel in and out and sit in the office all day when I'm in this sort of state. And also, um, every uh, three times a day from today, I have to bathe my mouth in a special mouthwash that the dentist gave me. And I don't swish it around, I'll just be leaving it to sit in my mouth for a minute at a time. So I'll be doing the first one of those um, after two o'clock today, which will mark the 24 hour mark since getting my tooth removed. It's the Sunday of the late May bank holiday weekend, and it's been two and a half weeks since I had my tooth out. And the gum has not really settled down to my satisfaction yet and I have been a bit worried about it. So I did phone the dental surgery on Tuesday of last week, which was 12 days after the tooth came out and said that the gum felt quite mushy and that I could taste bacteria. Now the bacteria seems to have settled down a bit. The gum is still a bit squishy and it feels a little bit kind of sore to the touch. I haven't eaten on that side yet. So the surgery did say that if I was still worried about it, one week from then, which is Tuesday to come, then that I should contact them. So that's in two days time. We'll see how it goes. But I don't know if this is like a pure coincidence or something, but just this past week, Paul, what has happened to you? I've had to go into the surgery. I saw my dentist on, uh, on that day. They did say to me that there was a bit of recession from the gum and the gum is the thing that is causing the issue with my tooth. So unfortunately, 
I am going to have to have my tooth taken out because of the pain that the gum is causing. And it is as a result of um, years of neglect back then because I think I wasn't um, having good gum hygiene back when I was growing up. So I lay that as to blame right now. Um, I am reluctantly going to have the tooth taken out because I think otherwise it would be painful in the future. And the doctor or the dentist did say to me that um, I am getting this a lot earlier than was because they have caught my at a much earlier stage. But the thing is, you only had the toothache from this week. It just suddenly started and it, yeah. everything just seemed to go so quickly. You saw yeah. the dentist, you just made the, got the yeah. emergency appointment yeah. and yeah. now it's being taken out this week. And it's a, it's a lower molar. It's not the one right at the back. It's the one next it's to the it. right hand side of the one uh, next to it. I had the back molar taken out. So that's our update and it's starting to rain here. It's, it's May, you would think that we would be having good weather. <laughs> but, oh bad. no, oh no. But we will update you. And this is a unique piece of footage because this particular bit will be appearing in both my health episode and in Paul's health episode, which you'll be watching in September. And by then, hopefully all our no teeth issues pain. will have settled down, fingers crossed. All right, let's go. It's now the 29th of May. So it's just over a week since I spoke to the dentist last. And I called them again yesterday and I do have an appointment today to see the dentist just to check out my gum. And I'm having a bit of a difficult journey into Kew Gardens. Lots of problems on the tube. It always seems to happen every time I go to the dentist, which probably means it just always happens. So I'll check in with you again after my appointment. Well, it's good news. What I was feeling were bone fragments from the tooth that was extracted. The dentist has removed them and she says that everything is healing normally. She did say that I probably shouldn't eat on that side for at least another week. And I said I hadn't been brushing there and she said that that was right not to put any sort of force on it as yet. So it has put my mind at rest. I am having a terrible day travelling and that, in a health episode, is putting my blood pressure up. I'm on my way into work now and I've had to take a series of buses because there are problems on the tube and the bus that I need to get me to work has just pulled in at Hammersmith bus station so I better go. That's the update for now. It's the early hours of the 9th of June and I've just returned from Hillingdon Hospital having just got off a flight from Marseille in France about two hours before that. I got very badly bitten by an insect of some sort in the hotel in France and it happened in two batches. The first set of bites was on my hands and my arms and my head and my ear right here as well, which you can probably still see slightly swollen. Um, but those bites were nothing compared with what happened three days later when I was bitten all over my legs, my left leg especially, and on my right foot. And um, these bites have swollen up terribly. Um, I was given, well, after seeking help at the pharmacist in Marseille, I, I bought antihistamines and also cortisone cream. After taking the cortisone, the bites flared up into huge, great big red splodges about the size of a 50p coin. You are going to see them, so if you don't want to see them, look away now. So tonight, after landing at Heathrow, um, Paul and I got a taxi back home, dropped off our luggage, and then the taxi took us straight to the urgent care unit at Hillingdon Hospital. And it was only an hour and a half's wait on a Saturday night. That was pretty good going, I think. 
and um, I saw the triage nurse and then I saw the doctor and she has prescribed antibiotics more as a precaution than anything else. Um, she said that if a fever was to break out, it would most likely be within the first 72 hours of the bites. So it's almost around about 72 hours since I was bitten on the Wednesday night now. So hopefully I'm out of the danger zone. I haven't had any fever. I was quite hot at Marseille airport coming home because it really was hot there. It was 30 degrees Celsius and I think I was just sweltering. I was told to continue using the cortisone and the antihistamines and I've already taken my first antibiotic. It is Tuesday the 11th of June. I'm wearing a jacket because it's actually quite cold. It's only going up to about 15 degrees Celsius today. We're not having a great start to the summer. But I thought it would be a good opportunity to give you a bit of a general update on things because lots of things have been happening. It's been two and a half days since I had my trip to Hillingdon Hospital about the bites. So I'm on antibiotics, antihistamine and hydrocortisol. And the good news is, is that everything seems to be working. The color of the bites has reduced, uh, the inflammation has gone down and they are not hot anymore. So today it is my first hygienist appointment since I had the molar extracted five weeks ago. So how is my gum at the moment? Well, it has settled down, thank goodness. It's still maybe slightly soft, slightly tender, but I did start eating on that side for the first time last week. And uh, I've been sort of careful not to eat anything too rough or hard on that side um, but I'm just sort of taking it day by day and eventually I will just not even think about oh I'm eating on that side it'll just happen naturally but there's no pain or anything it's a relief to have the tooth out and in the long run I'm not going to miss it I'm sure um, I'm not really missing it already and I'm sure it's it's neighbor in there um, is relieved that it has gone so I will report back after my hygienist appointment and see how I'm getting on. Now there is a lot of staining on my teeth and that is mostly because I was using um, Corsidol uh, mouthwash for a few weeks after the tooth was taken out, definitely for two full weeks and it does stain. And my brushing hasn't been as good as it, as it could have been. The trauma has really sort of uh, taken its toll on my routine. Now I started off this particular update with a look at my my feet. So how is the arthritis? Well it's not been good on certain days. Uh, we are just back from France where I got bitten of course and I had to wear my um, firmer trainers um, nearly every day because we were doing a lot of walking and it did get quite sore. When I was at work yesterday I had to take my shoe off for a while because the pain was actually quite bad and today I'm wearing the softer trainers but they're ones which still have um, support and uh, it's not too bad. I did put deep heat on before I left home this morning and most days, in fact, every, every day when I'm going out, if I'm walking, so if I'm going out, I'll be walking somewhere, I'll put on either Deep Heat or the uh, arthritis relief cream that I bought in New York last November. So just crossing another road here at Kew Gardens, where my dentist is based, and I'll report back after the hygienist appointment nice and clean now so I've had a good scale and polish and yeah um, I obviously hadn't been doing the best job with my teeth in the last few weeks uh, but I do know what to do I've got my little interdental brushes um, of various sizes because the gaps between the teeth are different uh, so my next appointment is in three months time in September 
and that will be after this episode goes out because um, this is due to go out in September. Actually, it might be around the date of my next appointment, but I don't think it's going to make it into this one. So hopefully I will do better and everything's healing normally at the extraction site. So that is good news. It's the 17th of June and I have just been to Specsavers because I needed an eye test. I was having trouble reading um, some blurred vision the last few weeks and when I had the glaucoma test they said that my right eye wasn't too good on the field of vision. Well the good news is that everything seemed to be fine today apart from the fact that I do need a new prescription. So I'll be getting three new pairs of glasses. Two will be verifocal, similar to what I've been wearing for the past few years. And both of those are going to be on very snazzy titanium frames where you can actually stretch the legs out. Not recommended to do it just for fun, but they do stretch. And then I'm also going to be getting a pair of super readers, which I'll be using when I am at work, using the computer or at home on the laptop doing the YouTube stuff. So I'll be collecting those on the 2nd of July and that is the next time that you will see a clip from me in relation to this aspect of my health. Hopefully there won't be anything else that happens in the meantime. Well, I've just been to Specsavers and I've got three new pairs of glasses. So let's take a look at them. I got two pairs of verifocals and I decided to get a new type of frame which is quite elasticated. Let's take a closer look. So you can see it's quite a thin frame and it's a thin lens as well. I'm not actually going to move these legs too much but they are quite springy and um, it means that, that if you do sort of bend them in some way, uh, they're hopefully not going to break. Now this second pair of verifocals, if I don't put myself in the eye, they are made of titanium, at least the legs are, and that means that they're quite springy as well. And again, it's if you're a bit clumsy like me, you might tend to sort of like maybe press down on the glasses if they're sitting on the desk or something. So this way, it hopefully means that I won't break them. And finally, the pair that I'll probably be wearing the most because I will be using them for work and for reading. They are Hugo Boss and these are called Super Readers. So they're basically just reading glasses, but they've got two types of lens, so almost like a very focal. Um, the top part of the lens is more focused towards when you're looking at a computer and the bottom part is when you're sort of looking down perhaps at your phone or a newspaper or a magazine. And I've used them once today already and um, they do actually work quite well I have to say. It's mid-August. So the other day I received a letter in the post from an NHS affiliated survey called Our Future Health. And it said that if you took part in this survey by giving lots of your personal information, having tests done, including blood tests, uh, talking about your lifestyle, filling in a survey, that they would offer a £10 shopping voucher. Now, I am always up for a freebie, so I was in it to win it, definitely. Now, with the survey, it is for life as long as you stay in it, but if you want to leave at any time, you can. And the information is basically used to gather a picture of the health of the nation to help future generations. So you're not doing this for yourself, you are doing it for other people. They also collect DNA, and that is to sort of help develop a picture of, I guess, um, people's origins and uh, health uh, situations across the generations. So this could go on for years. So let me tell you a little bit about our future health. Our world leading research program is building a community of up to 5 million volunteers across the UK to create an incredibly detailed picture of the nation's health. Health researchers will use this picture to find new ways to prevent, detect and treat diseases like cancer, heart disease and diabetes. 
So in the leaflet that they gave me today, it said, by attending your appointment today, you are helping everyone live longer and healthier lives. You'll also have the chance to receive feedback on your health-related information during the appointment and find out about your risk of disease in the future. And the results were in immediately, and it's a bit of a mixed bag. Some of it I knew, of course, because I can weigh myself. Other bits I didn't know. So height, first of all, I'm five foot eight, which means I've shrunk. I was five foot eight the last time I got measured right enough, but in my younger days, I was five foot nine. And it's probably because I've got a curvature of the spine. I'm really sort of, my posture is not good at all. And it's due to sitting all day in an office environment that doesn't help. My weight was 105.8 kilos, that's 16 stone and six pounds. And that is exactly the weight that I was when I weighed myself at home. So at least it shows that my cheapo weighing skills do actually give an accurate picture. Waist circumference. Now, I don't wear my trousers around my waist. I don't think most people do. They sort of wear them quite low down. Um, so I was quite horrified to reveal that although I can wear a 38 or a 40 waist pair of jeans, my waist is actually 49.6 inches or 126 centimetres. Um, that is a statistic that I'm really not happy about at all. They took two readings of blood pressure. The first one was higher than the second. So I was 154 over 91 and then 158 over 88. Now they did um, blood tests as well. And um, they did say afterwards that I should have been drinking more liquid. And in the instructions that they sent me, it did actually say drink water beforehand. And I'd missed that. And the thing is, um, I am very bad at drinking water or any type of liquid. I can sit for hours and discover I've not had any liquid at all. And it does affect the voice as well. That's why I'm a little bit croaky, probably because I'm not, I'm not hydrated enough. So it's easier to take blood if you have had liquid beforehand, if you've been drinking water. Um, if you don't, the blood can thicken, I suppose and it's harder to find a vein and that's what happened with me today. We'll come to the cholesterol in a moment but first of all we'll have a look at the heart rate and that was 68 beats per minute and the normal range is 60 to 100 so at least I'm within normal range. My heart rhythm was regular so that's good and the cholesterol which was from the finger prick sample um, was right on the cusp uh, normal is less than five and i was 5.07 and finally my bmi my body mass index and i was able to work that out myself i knew it wouldn't be good uh, it was 35.1 which means i am obese and i didn't need statistics to tell me that now i'm a week away at the moment from an appointment at the gps uh, it's the first time I will have actually seen my own GP for four and a half years due to COVID and then um, just a real breakdown in the system at the NHS at our uh, local practice, which I'm afraid is not very good. And I have to say that although all the medical staff have been excellent, the reception staff are, how can I put this, um, less than public facing, let's just put it that way. One or two of them are okay, but the majority of them are not um, really people who should be working with the public, I have to say. That's true. So I've not been feeling great. Um, I, my arthritis in my big toe has got worse, and I think I've got it in a finger now as well. And that was the original reason that I wanted to see the GP, because the arthritis in my big toe has got worse in the past year, and the toe is actually starting to become quite misshapen and it does make it difficult to walk. But I'm not going to beat about the bush. Um, for the past few weeks, I've been tired all the time. My work, I, I'm finding, is becoming more and more stressful. I'm not sleeping. I am an insomniac anyway, but I'm going to bed later and later, and then it's taking me to four in the morning to, to get to sleep. I wake up two or three times in the night, not to go to the toilet because I simply don't even need to go. And that's probably due to the dehydration. Um, 
and I'm, so I'm not urinating and when I do it has a very sweet smell and I'm worried about this is it diabetes have I got diabetes now or is it something else is it because I'm simply not drinking enough water and it's a, a kidney infection or something or it's the just the kidneys having to work overtime to produce the urine I don't know what it is so I'm going to use my precious 10 minute doctor's appointment to basically say that I'm feeling tired all the time my urine smells sweet and I'm also finding it difficult to get exercise because the arthritis in my big toe appears to be getting worse so if I can sort of amalgamate all the issues and make it sound as though it's just one problem then hopefully we'll get some solutions maybe I need blood tests the blood tests that I had today were not for personal medical reasons that's part of the survey although I do think that if they find something extremely bad that they would let you know or let your GP know so I'll check in again after my GP appointment which is in just over a week from now and that will be near the end of August we really know how to make a splash on it's Paul and Marcus on YouTube so please subscribe it's the 17th of August and two or three days ago I started getting this weird feeling in my head. It felt itchy, it felt sore when I frowned and it still does. And then I realised that we had seen flies and fleas and other insects around the house because we've had a spell of really hot weather. I also saw two massive spiders in the house as well. I killed one and the other one escaped. It was that size, I'm telling you. Oh my... Oh. Yeah. Um, anyway, it seems as though I've got bites on my head. Nowhere else, not like in France, so it's not all over my legs or anything. But it is quite sore up here. And I thought this morning, it's a Saturday, um, I was passing the local pharmacist and I thought, I'll just go in and see. So anyway, they said that I could take two creams. Um... One is a hydrocortisone cream, and that is what I was using when I was in France. Now, I decided not to use the one that I had in France again, because I thought, well, I'm not sure if the ingredients are exactly as these are. But then I realised that when we came back from France, Paul had been prescribed exactly the same thing, mm. the hydrocortisone cream. So what we're going to do, we're going to hold on to the one that's not open for now because we'll probably get bitten at some point again and I'm going to use this one that uh, Paul had used a couple of months ago um, because I know it's exactly the same thing so this is to be applied twice a day I've also been taking since yesterday uh, antihistamine so this is basically it's a lower yeah this is over the counter why how do you pronounce that Paul Laura 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 Dean yeah so it's just from boots, it's like, like hay fever and allerg allergy relief, but it's it's an antihistamine for all intents and purposes. Isn't it, Paul? I, I had to buy that when we came back from France. Well, that's what they said at the hospital uh, when we came back from France to take after yeah. a bite. So, so I know it's the right thing. But the pharmacist has also given me, well, not given, it's sold. It's like nine pounds for the two tubes. This Amphisan cream. And it's relief from insect bites, stings, and nettle rash. How much and can you put it on? It says, well, it says here, anthocyanin cream should be applied directly to the site of the insect bite, sting, or stinging nettle rash. For best results, use as soon as possible after the bite. <laughs> well, hmm. Don't use on large areas of skin. So I'm only going to apply it on this bit at the front, even though there are bits down here or up here that seem not so good as well but it's not really bothering me um don't use if the skin is cut or grazed i don't think this is cut not exactly. really because it's, it's just inflamed it hasn't broken on eczema or extensively broken skin or areas of sunburnt skin i don't think i'm sunburned either because i haven't really been out you're just a little pink from the sun yeah but, it's not sunburned no. such so i haven't used this yet so i'm going to open it up and it'll have one of these very mm. handy little piercing things. How often do you need to apply it? Oh, it said two or three times a day, I think. Look, there's like a lot coming oh up. Oh, God, yeah. That's the air that was in it. 
yes, it said apply as soon as possible two to three times a day for up to three days. And with the hydrocortisone, it's once or twice a day. Now, obviously, you can't put them both on at the same time. So I put the hydrocortisone on three hours ago, and I'm going to put this on now. Uh, the pharmacist said that that would be okay. Just... Some of this will be wasted, I'm afraid, because... Take a lot of it. Or, well, or I don't really want to have a lot. But this is the trouble with these tubes. When you pierce it, it just sort of comes out. So I don't have a mirror here. So, Paul, you're going to have to direct direct me do you think that's going to the right sort of place me. down a bit or I'll... here okay just here okay all right yeah and i'm just going to rub it in and this should give me some relief hopefully so if it hasn't cleared up put the rest on oh no that's far far too much i might use a little bit at the back it's not to be used on large areas of skin you see oh i can feel it sort of cooling already do you want to put some more there? Uh, no, that, that's far, far too much. We're just going to have to like scoop a little bit of it up and then just get rid of that. I think I can save a little bit of it by putting the, the lid back on. Um, so we'll check in maybe in three days' time to see what improvement there is. And I've got my doctor's appointment in six days' time. So if it's not improved by then, I might have to say something. But I'm just wondering, yes, it, okay, I was... This is obviously a bite rather than some sort of a rash. And we did see the flying things. But it's just another thing that has just made me more sort of down because I've been feeling rather unhealthy. With, and run down. And run down and everything anyway. And maybe my body's just not reacting and fighting off things as easily as it could have done if I wasn't so fatigued and so run down and whatever. But we'll see in three days what sort of improvement there has been. It's Friday the 23rd of August and I've just seen my GP. In fact, it's the first time that I saw my named GP for four and a half years. So I told him everything, the fatigue, uh, problems with the, the urine and all that sort of stuff. I mentioned in my last post. So I'm having blood tests. Um, they will take place on Thursday the 5th of September, I might have to double check that, it's written down. And they're going to test for basically everything including possible prostate issues. And I may, well most likely will also have to have a, uh, a rectal examination at some point. So I'm at that age, 52, where prostate issues can turn up. Uh, I did have a rectal examination about two years ago with, a, with another doctor and everything was fine then. So now I just basically have to, to wait and uh, have the blood tests and then have to make an appointment two weeks after that and we'll see what the results might be. It's Thursday the 5th of September, the day of my blood tests. Now I've tried to hydrate a little bit more. I had a couple of drinks of tea last night. I still didn't have any water though. I had two coffees this morning and I'm hoping that that is going to be enough to reveal a vein and they'll be able to take the blood, quite a lot of blood they're taking. I'm having tests for virtually everything today, apart from whatever they check for the, uh, the non, uh, for, for the fasting one. I didn't, didn't have to fast, thank goodness for that. But the past week has been probably one of the most stressful that I've had in a job. Uh, everything just seems to be getting worse for me day after day uh, to the point that on Monday night, I actually had a panic attack in bed. Um, I thought that my left foot was paralyzed. I was having difficulty breathing. I couldn't hardly breathe at all. And I had heart palpitations. Um, I thought I was dying, basically. I didn't realize it was a panic attack at the time, but the next day when I put everything together, I knew that's what it was. So after I have the blood tests today, um, there will be a couple of weeks wait probably until I get the results. They may contact me, they may not. If they don't, then I have to make an appointment with, uh, to see the GP, whether that's over the phone for a consultation. Probably, he probably won't need to see me in person again. And we will hopefully get to the bottom of why I'm just so tired and all the other issues that we talked about.
It's Thursday the 12th of September and I woke up this morning with a bit of a fright because when I opened my mouth, my jaw clicked. I know this isn't a normal move, but <laughs> sometimes at night I find that depending what side my head is on the pillow, my jaw will click, but it's never happened before that I actually wake up and it's clicking. And it's about an hour later now, it's settled down a bit. I can still feel a bit of clicking and I've got a bit of a headache. And of course I had to like look it up online. I might have temporomandibular disorder, TMD. This is what it says on nhs.uk. And it says that the disorder is a condition affecting the movement of the jaw. It's not usually serious and generally gets better on its own. The symptoms include pain around your jaw, ear and temple. I do have a bit of a headache and I had it yesterday morning as well. Clicking, popping or grinding noises when you move your jaw. Well, I've got the clicking. It's not happening now this time, but depending how I move my mouth, there is a bit of a click and there was just when I started this video. A headache around your temples. I've got a headache here. Difficulty opening your mouth fully. Well, I don't know if that's fully, but I'm not even going to attempt to open it any further. And your jaw locking when you open your mouth. Well, I thought that I actually had got a locked jaw this morning. Um, I thought that it was, or it was going to lock. And anyway, I've read on about how to treat these symptoms. It says to eat soft food like pasta, omelets, and soup, so I'm gonna have an omelette for breakfast before I go to work. Take paracetamol or ibuprofen, I'm going to do that as soon as I've eaten. Hold an ice pack or heat pack, wrap the tea towel to the jaw, whichever feels better. I don't have any pain on the jaw, so I'm not gonna to have to do that. Massage the jaw muscles. Well, I have been pushing this side because if I put pressure on this side, I don't know if you can hear that, it clicks. I shouldn't be doing that. I've been doing this side to try to push it back in and try to find ways to relax. Well, let's not even go there. It says that don't, this is on the NHS site again, don't chew gum or pen tops, so well, I'll never do that. Do not bite food with your front teeth. That's gonna be a bit of a problem. Do not yawn too wide. Do not bite your nails. Well, I haven't done that for years. And do not clench your teeth apart from when eating, your teeth should be apart. I do grind my teeth, my dentist has said that. Um, but the weird thing is when I woke up, I thought that I had been lying on the other side. So I thought I'd been lying on this side, which would have pushed the jaw away. Um, I've read further and there, this can be a serious condition if it's combined with a series of other symptoms. Um, at the minute, uh, the clicking seems to have settled down, but I do have the headache. So I'm just going to have to see how things go today. I've got a dentist appointment on Tuesday, and that is the day before this episode goes out. So I'm going to have to say to the, it's a hygienist appointment actually, I'm going to have to say to the hygienist that this has happened, and I may not be able to open my mouth the whole way because I'm worried that my jaw might lock It's Tuesday the 17th of September, one day before this episode goes up and I have come to one of my favourite places, Kew Gardens, to visit the dentist. Well actually it's my hygienist appointment. Well during this episode you will have seen that I had my tooth out way back in May and everything has completely settled down. I don't even miss it anymore. One thing though is that I can't really eat nuts. Um, so I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. If I was to crush them, then it would be okay. But anything that needs to be sort of like crunched down on is a no-no now. So after my hygienist appointment, I'll come back with one final piece. But in the meantime, if you've liked today's episode, then please do give us a like, do give us a comment, and especially please do subscribe. And if you'd like to buy us a coffee to help us along the way, there is a link in the description. Right, well, I've just been to see the hygienist and 
as usual with me, is a case of could do better. Uh, I really must do. There was some blood. What can I say? I've just got to try to use all the, the tools that I've got. Uh, the floss sticks, the small head and the toothbrush and everything just to try to make things work. I did mention about the clicky jaw that I had and um, anyway it didn't click today so that was fine. We did discuss whether there was any pain with it, there wasn't, so it's just something to keep an eye on. And I've made an appointment for my next hygienist's session and that will be on the 7th of January. And well that's it for this health episode. And I'm going to leave you with a little teaser because I've made quite a big decision that I am hoping is going to improve my health, that is going to lower my stress levels and give me a better work-life balance. More on that in the next health episode next year. Bye for now.